At the start of Wuthering Wakes, with a rather tumultuous initial release the game had, compensation was given to all players in the form of a 5-star selector, among other things. It was a welcome gesture to say the least. Naturally, people were wondering who would be the best of the five to choose. Of course, it was practically a given that Verena would be the best option, but most people likely delegated their 5-star banner guarantee towards her. And so, everyone was trying to figure out who would be the next best option, ultimately settling between either Encore or Kalkaro, with Yinlin also having received a fair bit of attention due to her and Jian both being playable in the close beta, Kalkaro appeared to be the obvious choice. Considered at one point to be the strongest attacker in the game due to circumstances working to his advantage, many were impressed by his potential, believing his team to be one of if not arguably the best in the game. Not even a few months in however, and it feels almost as if he's not even brought up in discussions pertaining to meta relevance. What happened that resulted in such a quick 180 for the guy? That's what we'll be investigating in today's episode of Why No One Place, featuring Kalkaro. Wu is advancing in power at a fairly decent rate, not in the sense that all version 1.0 units are no longer relevant, rather we haven't had a single featured 5 star character who isn't part of the Apex tiers. As more and more units come out in 1.4, 1.5, so on and so forth, they too can be expected to have a high placement, with the eventual result being a relative inflation of power. The beginning of any gacha game is met with uncertainty. Everyone knows not to put too much stock in early version tier lists, given the high probability of inaccuracy. Be that as it may, Wuthering has gone through multiple iterations of beta testing, and during the close beta just before the live release, Kalkaro appeared to have a lot going for him, particularly in tandem with Yinlin. The bulk of his playstyles housed in either one of two approaches, hyper carry main DPS or quick swap dual DPS. Regardless of which one, performing well on him depends on how well you can sequence his empowered heavy attacks within his forte circuit, which can be further strengthened after casting Liberation. The appeal of Kalkaro initially came from the player's ability to cut his otherwise long animation time short through swaps. As you know, it's possible to switch to another character in the midst of the existing unit's attack animation, allowing the entering character to strike while the exiting one completes their animation. This is known as swap cancelling, a fairly mechanically intensive technique to get the hang of due to every attack having a different time window for when you're allowed to rotate and keep the attack alive. On the other side of the equation is Yinlin, whose strengths need no introduction. Having long animation and cast times as well, Yinlin pairs nicely with Kalkaro by virtue of the two being able to continuously tandem attacks alongside each other, saving animation time on both ends, not to mention Yinlin's outro skill, offering an electro and liberation damage deep into the tune of 20 and 25% respectively. This was one of very few synergistic aspects available to the player during the early days of Wuwa, where the roster was still very small and lacking in the same extensive party construction you'd find in a more comprehensive and expanded roster. Damage-wise, Kalkarl was exceptionally powerful, having splendid numbers across all his attacks. The challenge was, of course, learning how to master Quick Swap on him. To this day, he still remains one of the two most difficult characters to play at an optimal level, tied with maybe Encore, leading us to the first reason why he fell off so quickly. Kalkaro's playstyle borders on prohibitive in terms of difficulty. While for most of the units, quick swapping is give or take a luxury that can make an effective character even more so, for Kalkaro, failure to master swap cancelling results in a drastically different character performance wise. While it is possible to play in Masse Hyper Carry with extended on field time similar to Jian and Jinxi, at this point the consensus is that Kalkaro is best played when rotating alongside another attacker. Most of his critical abilities, namely the empowered heavy attacks from his forte circuit, go through long animation times that, if you don't swap cancel them, can leave you locked out of doing anything else for up to seconds at a time. Casually speaking, this shouldn't be that big of a deal, but when fighting in time trials like Tower of Reversity or high difficulty holograms where you can literally get one shot in, every bit of damage and likewise every single mistake will count towards or against completion, notably on account of his ability scaling being rather poor for the time it takes to use it without animation cancel. The duration of his liberation is quite short, giving you an unforgiving window of time to get as many heavy attacks off as possible. You have to perform 5 basic attacks to acquire Death Messenger, the empowered forte heavy attack that's only accessible during his liberation buff. When done so at the most optimal task level mechanics, you can expect to pull off 3 of these attacks. Maybe 4 if you're goaded, but realistically you might only get 2. If you recall my Why No One Plays episode on Mingyang, I gave a similar mention to how it can be extremely unforgiving to play him considering he relies on a very short lasting time frame to get his combo off, leaving him rather inconsistent. Call Carl was that and then some. A single lapse in rotation or a field swap cancel results in considerable loss of DPS for that rotation, to the point where you might as well restart the run and try again. Performing this on Kalkaro alone would be difficult in and of itself, much less including someone else who also necessitates quick swapping. Though not a negative per se, Yinlin's another unit with an arsenal of powerful, albeit slow attacks, requiring you to make liberal use of quick swapping or cancelling through her liberation to shorten her rotation time as well. 
Conveniently, Kalkaro and Yinlin can achieve a win-win scenario whereby the former can swap cancel to the latter who can then swap cancel back to the former and repeat the cycle over and over again, along with the previously stated supplementary buffs offered by Yinlin's outro skill. Curiously, back in the closed beta you would be able to accomplish this without ever losing the outro skill buff provided by Yinlin. Most outro buffs deactivate when the entering unit leaves the field, however, you may recall, when swap cancelling on a character, their character animation and effects still play out. Supposedly, this counted as the character still being on field, meaning if you swapped out from Cal Carl to Yinlin, then swapped back to him before his animation concluded and he disappeared, the game would interpret it as if Cal Carl never actually left the field, allowing you to sustain the full duration of Yinlin's outro skill, despite technically having rotated multiple times. From close beta to live release, this got nerfed to where it would be guaranteed to disappear if Cal Carl swapped resulting in a fair loss of DPS and even more of a reason to master his rotation since you now have to make up that difference. For many players, namely the general public, he's too demanding of a character to play. The margin for error on him is so tight that even if he could theoretically out DPS everyone in the game, the practical likelihood of you consistently attaining it is next to impossible, especially given the fact that enemies aren't just going to stand there and take it. It's one thing to fight a stationary target dummy and see how much you can max out your DPS. It's another to fight a boss or group of enemies who will do their damnedest to make life for you as difficult as possible. Exacerbating his already razor thin margin for execution is that you might get screwed by anything the boss or enemy you're fighting does to throw you off tempo, whether that's dodging their own attacks or having to reposition to chase after them if they bounce around the battlefield. Unlike other units who can halt their rotation and resume where they left off like Changli or attackers with an extremely forgiving duration like Shangli Yao, even a single moment of disruption can ruin his entire rotation. Kalkaro has 11 seconds to get everything done, which may seem like a fair amount of time, but considering you have to do no less than 5 auto attacks before you can do your heavy empowered forte attack, losing even 1 or 2 seconds of uptime might forfeit you a cast of death messenger, where the majority of his DPS is held. Furthermore, he has a cooldown of 20 seconds, roughly about half uptime. Unfortunately, none of his sequences do anything to remedy his lack of duration. Then when taking into account the fact that he has to go through extended rotations, getting hit by something is especially painful. The problem is, Kalkaro doesn't have any interruption resistance in his kit whatsoever. Like at all. You have to rely entirely on either swap cancel, counters, and dodges, placing even more onus on the player to be on point with their rotations. Other times you might just not have the opportunity to use a full rotation if you're fighting a boss that likes to hop, skip, and jump all over the place, which happens to comprise the majority of bosses in Wuwa. So while he does have the potential to do good damage, it's functionally impossible to do so consistently without resetting over and over until you get the perfect result. If you look at it arbitrarily, think about it like this. Kalkaro is character A with a pressure range of 50 to 150%, while character B has a pressure range of 100 to 130%. While character A might have a higher ceiling, character B has a better floor, averaging character A out to 100, while character B, despite having a lower ceiling, averages out to 115. If, say, hypothetically, Cal Carl's pressure range was 50 to 200, then that would be a different story as he would average out at 125%. Previously, he used to have that. No longer having the ability to maintain Yinlin's outro buff even after swapping out was a heavy loss to his damage, but as you know, roughly every character got some amount of buffs or nerfs in between close beta to now, and Cal Carl got hit arguably the hardest of any character. Without getting too deep into the numbers, most of his attacks got flat out nerfed, dealing a fair bit less damage across the board. Not enough to completely invalidate the character, but enough to where the aforementioned pressure range is a lot tighter. He's consistently got nerfed enough to where perfect play no longer became optional. And on the subject of consistency, that's where the biggest slap in the face came to him, not even two versions down the road. Ordinarily, I'm not the type of person to argue that one person blatantly power creeps another since every character has their own nuances and strengths, but whatever semblance of people giving Kalkaro a chance or meaning was practically thrown out the window with the release of Shang Li Yao. Not only is he an electro attacker, not only is he a hyper carry with the potential to swap cancel a few of his attacks for a bit of extra damage, not only is he a lot more lenient in virtually every aspect, not only does he deal fairly consistent if not ever so slightly more damage in a relatively wider AoE, but he was also free, meaning everyone and their mothers have him. It would be one thing if Shang Li Yao had to be pulled for compared to Cal Kara, who was effectively free to obtain courtesy of the selector ticket and the unit of choice banner thing, but Shang Li Yao was complementary to boot, making it almost inevitable for the two of them to be compared. Shang Li Yao is, for all intents and purposes, in the same niche as Cal Carl, only baby proofed to hell and back. He too acquires an Empower Forte circuit that builds up to perform an Empower and Heavy attack based on liberation damage, but there are some notable differences that make him far easier to play. 1. Shang Li Yao has built in stagger resistance, letting him proceed with this rotation without any fear of being disrupted, though to be fair, you still have to dodge and whatnot so as to avoid taking damage. Minor attacks, however, can be effectively ignored with sufficient healing. 2. He can acquire 5 performance capacity through ways other than basic attacking, allowing for faster, more flexible rotations. 
For instance, you can do resonant skill into a mid-air attack to get fast stacks, which is actually the optimal thing to do. Skill to mid-air attack, forte, then auto attack rotation, forte, then skill to mid-air attack again, and forte. That's a lot faster than 5 auto attacks, forte, 5 auto attacks, forte, 5 auto attacks, forte, all while trying to swap cancel as many of them as possible. 3. Shang Li Yao has time. Plenty of time. His liberation has 24 seconds of uptime with a cooldown of 25. Provided sufficient energy, this guy can have his ultimate up and effectively all times. Granted, you're not actually going to be in this empowered state forever since you're only afforded 3 empowered forte attacks in a single rotation, but that you're given plenty of time to perform a comparatively simpler combo is what makes Shang Li Yao extremely consistent which also makes using Yin Lin for him extremely consistent too. You can realistically pull off all 3 4 tan powered attacks within less than 12 seconds, meaning those extra 12 are there to account for dodging, chasing enemies, getting hit once or twice even though he has armor, or swapping to and from supports. Kalkaro was given no such luxury. He was punishment enough that Kalkaro, who was already difficult to play, became even more difficult following the nurse's swap cancel and his own motion values, but then, not even a couple months in, they released someone who is invariably the same playstyle, but with all the bug fixes and quality of life updates that Kalkaro should have had. And then to add insult to injury, Shang Li Yao ended up being free as well. Last reason I want to talk about pertains to what I said earlier about the game wasting no time releasing a lot of very strong characters. Not just Shang Li Yao, but in a general sense. With elements not being nearly as important in this game as they are in other gotchas, all DPS characters are effectively graded against each other. So far at least, there haven't been many situations in which you specifically need a fusion, or havoc, or spectral, or glacial characters. The bonus effects in Tower of Adversity are typically inclusive as well, for now anyway. Beyond that, there's also not as much focus on a specific playstyle. As an example, you don't have combat engines like follow-up attacks, breaks, and damage over time like in Honkai Staro. Subsequently, Jian, Jinxi, Encore, Changli, Shangli, Yao, Havoc, Grover, Danxin, Kalkaro, they're all judged on the same playing field, not really separated by niche. Anytime a stronger or more forgiving character comes out, they take market share away from Kalkaro, whether Electro or not, more so because opportunity cost is a driving factor behind whether the average player intends to go after them. Kalkaro's best partner Yinlin also happens to be an ideal partner for a variety of units, Changli, Shangli, Yao, Jinxi, even Havoc Grover. Were Kalkaro the only one who could reliably make use of Yinlin's power, then perhaps that would have been one reason to play him over others. In all likelihood, every other DPS unit that comes out will be stronger, more forgiving to play, have a higher ceiling and a lower floor, more AoE damage, something to that effect. Which, I get it, good for sales and stuff, I've seen it before. But it's almost uncanny how quickly it happened. Kalkaro was thought of as like top 2 best DPS only behind maybe Jian, and now even his best is worse than the average of some units. Kalkaro and Lingyang were given damn near unreasonable margins for error, while at the same time the new characters were made so generously that even if you were trying to play them poorly, you'd still be able to achieve their best rotation. In Kalkaro's defense, the game itself has some power crept, meaning if you were able to clear endgame content with him before, you can still clear endgame content with him now. In that regard, those who have been playing him can still continue playing him. But it's just fascinating how he was gassed up to be potentially the best attacker in the game in 1.0, and not even 2 or 3 versions in, people are pulling the childish Gambino pizza meme wondering what the hell happened to him. Either that, or perhaps it's another one of those moments where the community vastly overestimated him even when played correctly. And then in conjunction with the nurse he sustained from beta to now, it might have just put him down a lot more further than we initially thought. What do you guys think about Kalkaro? Do you think it's still over for him, or is there a chance he can come back in the meta? You're welcome to share in the comments down below. That's gonna be it for today, so if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you gave it a like and subscribed. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Varsferm, join my Discord server, and why not check out my Why No One Plays Ling Yang episode if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.